Tēnā koutou katoa, a ngā mihi ki a koutou i whakarongo mai nei tēnei wā. Jenny Lee Morgan tōku ingoa, uri tēnei nō Waikato, a ngā te mahuta, te ahiwaru, a ku hapū. Uh, ai, nei rā te mihi ki a koutou katoa. Mihi hohi te kaupapa uh, ki te 6th Indigenous Voices Conference uh, in Social Work. Uh, ngā mihi nui. Um, really lovely to be here. I'm, although I apologize for not being live at the moment, it's the school holidays and um, all of us are uh, looking after tamariki and mokopuna um, while also coming into the conference uh, as much as we can. So really uh, appreciate the opportunity to do this pre-record and hoping that you'll enjoy listening to the voices of uh, our marae-based researchers in this session. Um, special acknowledgements to the conference organisers, the keynote speakers, uh, all the speakers in the conference, but special acknowledgements to Fitiao Paul, whom is our uh, marae-based researcher at the Puya Marae and really has brought us to this conference and the opportunity to meet um, and to hear the presentations in this conference. So, tēnā no hoki koe Whitiao. Uh, Whitiao also is the social, the lead social worker at Te Puya Marae, of which this um, presentation is primarily about and has brought through her relationship with us as Ngā Wai Te Tui, a Māori and Indigenous Research Centre, brought another group of marae uh, to, to join this presentation. So I'm the director of Ngā Waititui, and we have uh, been really fortunate to build this lovely relationship with Te Puya Memorial Marae to do this work. And I just want to introduce really, and that's my role here, is to introduce the presentations that are in two parts. There are in total six marae in this presentation, uh, and the, the story will begin with Te Puya Marae, and as the presentation title suggests, Marae Ki Te Kainga. Uh, we look at the work of Te Puya Marae in serving our homeless whānau, uh, and how some of our most vulnerable whānau come into the marae and move into their new homes and some into home ownership, which has been you know, some profound shifts in whānau uh, well-being and um, hope and aspiration uh, and also really um, pivotal ways of thinking about the work of our marae in this space. So, mihi atu ki a te puia marae. The, the five other marae that join are also in the Māngere o Tāhuhu Papakura um, Rohe, in Tāmaki for those whom, um, of our Indigenous uh, um, audience who, who don't know Aotearoa, so I'm based in Auckland. Um, and in the theme of this conference, Rangatiratanga are also doing amazing work um, in their own marae, which we want to share uh, under, in, this, in this presentation. I really love the theme Rangatiratanga because it speaks to, of course, um, our ability to, to not only do our own thing, but to have faith in who we are and our practices and our um, beliefs and our ways of being. So I'm really looking forward to um, our marae being able to share from their perspective uh, the work they're doing. And I think... Um, the opportunity to partner as a research centre with our marae has been uh, just brought a whole lot of opportunities for us to talk and think and collectively analyse um, the work that we're doing and bring it to audiences such as this. So just really briefly, I want to do two things to contextualise this presentation. One is just to um, set the scene of this rohe in terms of where, we come, where we've come from and uh, Māngere, in particular, where Te Puya Marae is located, um, was made impoverished and, and desolate when an uh, act of uh, terror was began in um, a 
the 9th of July, 1863, when Governor Gray uh, gave an ultimatum to our peoples uh, who live there and live in this rohe that we should surrender or uh, to, uh, to our colonizers or retreat to Waikato and our people um, had no choice but retreated to our whanaunga in the Waikato. And when they did, our homes uh, were destroyed and our lands were taken and subsequently confiscated for being what we were termed at that time rebels. But just to um, give you an idea of what happened in 1863 to our lands, and we were a flourishing hapu, te ahiwaru, uh, and other hapu and iwi in Tāmaki at that time. Vincent, historian Vincent O'Malley writes, settlers swarmed into the deserted Māori settlements in South Auckland, which is all where, where these morai uh, that we'll be speaking in this presentation are located. And in the early months of the war, helping themselves, the colonisers, to whatever they liked. At Māngere, where hundreds of Tainui Māori had lived right up to the enforced eviction on the eve of the Waikato invasion, canoes were broken into pieces and burned, cattle seized, houses ransacked, and horses brought into Auckland and sold by the spoilers in the public market. And you know, our home, our homes were um, were taken, and we really became refugees in our own country. Uh, and the removal of our people from our whenua, our land, and our papakainga, our homes, not only preempted the cultural location, but as we all know, erased our economic base and created massive social, uh, massive ruptures to the social fabric of Fano, hapu and iwi and our ways of living. Um, ultimately, the alienation of people from our homelands impacted on our rangatiratanga, our ability to be self-sufficient and self-determining. So I just wanted to open with those words because I think the work of the marae is so incredible uh, that it needs, but it needs to be seen in that context of being completely, um, a rohe being completely destroyed to the way we have begun to rebuild and regenerate and restore um, our ways of being and practice rangatiratanga. The second uh, point I want to make in introducing the first presentation by Fitiao Paul and Irene Farnham around Te Puya Marae is, is Te Puya Herangi herself, whom the Marae um, is named after. Uh, te Puya Herangi was born in 1883 and is a niece of the second Māori king, Tāwhiao Te Whero Whero. Uh, and she was a, is renowned Māori leader, as many of you will know, for her, um, for, for many things, but, you know, one of them was her work ethic and her practical uh, solving of problems and, and helping of our people. And she not only looked after people's physical um, needs by providing, you know, shelter um, and health facilities and care, but also she provided for the cultural and spiritual well-being of our people. And I want to, um, you know, introduce Te Puya Marae and her legacy and the other Marae uh, that are in this presentation because uh, really she is front and centre of the work of Marae, of Manahitanga, of looking after others and looking after um, all those that, that require um, support and uh, that enter the, the, the environs of the marae. It's a real privilege to work with these uh, five marae or six marae. Uh, and so without um, going on any further, and I know that uh, we've got little snippets of um, the marae and people at the marae, and the place to give you a bit more of a feel for what marae are. And I could talk a lot, a lot about, about marae, but they're all different, the marae in this um, presentation. Uh, mana whenua marae, uh, mata waka marae, and taurahere marae. And I know those things will be explained as we go. 
so I hope you you get a feel for the Marae as well as some of the research that we're doing uh, that that speaks to um, the evidence, if you like, uh, in terms of the progress and uh, that each of the Marae are making uh, in serving their own whānau. So, Ngā mihi ki a koutou. Hope everyone has a great conference. Really looking forward to the keynotes, um, especially uh, um, Taina and Hariata. Looking forward to your keynote on on Friday. Uh, ngā mihi ki a koutou. Kia ora. and greetings. My name is Fitiao Paul and I'm the lead social worker on the programme Manaki Tangata Irua, transitional housing provider to Puia Memorial Marae. Let me introduce you to Irene Farnham, who is doing an internship at Nawaiati Tui and has been working alongside me with this project. What is transitional housing? It is a temporary supportive accommodation funded by two government agencies, the Ministry of Social Development and Kainga Order, with the intention to transition people into long-term housing. Most transitional housing providers operate from mainstream perspectives. However, many of the people who find themselves homeless are Māori. When you have a high number of Māori accessing mainstream services provided in the community, they don't always see themselves represented. However, there are increasing numbers of Māori providers. Our context of homelessness is different to overseas definitions, which has been identified as a factor that contributes to New Zealand having the highest rates of homelessness in the OECD. Manaki Tangata Irua is a marae based transitional housing provider and is the first in Aotearoa. The project is funded by BBHTC and is part of the Uiki project. This project follows on from another project called Manaki Ote Marae and is interested in looking at the whānau perspectives. This is a three-year project and this presentation is based on the initial findings. The research methodology is Kaupapa Māori. 102 whānau have been housed since 2017 and 12 out of these have been interviewed for this project. This project and presentation focuses on the question, what makes the Manaki Tangata Air Programme one of the most successful transitional housing services to rehome Farno back into urban communities. The Manaki Tangata Irua program was set up and based on the legacy of Tipuya Hirangi. Tikanga permeates through everything on the Marae from the Fari. The Tikanga is Manaki. The kawa or the rules do not change in any place on the marae. The crucial difference is not only the approach being kaupapa Māori, 
but that the work is located within the strongest cultural bastions, that is marae. A short overview of the four stages. Maruiti is safe haven. From the time the whānaus accept coming onto the program and move onto the marae, they create a safe space and probably have the best sleep ever that they've had for anything up to three months. Te Matangahau is new beginnings. Fano come onto the marae with complex issues and then after they've rejuvenated it is time to start working alongside them so that they can start moving into whānau order. This is a place where they're ready to move into their homes. They have achieved or are still achieving a lot of the task that they want to, to do. We are confident that the whānaus, when they move into their house, that they will continue their journey. Mana motahake is when they open their wings and they fly. Kia ora. Um, as Fitzgerald has already explained, Maruiti is safe haven, and this Pakia mother of three explains her experience of Maruiti as as such. Um, at first, it was really scary because I didn't know what to expect, and I've never been in that situation. As soon as we got to Tepuia, we got and we got the cabin we had. It was just like I could breathe. We had somewhere that we could call home instead of living out of the car. So Maruiti is a time of ahurutanga for many whānau, a safe space and place um, like this whānau who had been living in their car. Um, a marae like Te Puya allows no violence, alcohol or drugs and is a whānau oriented environment. Whakawhanaungatanga or active relationship building creates belonging and builds trust. The tikanga of manaki um, underpins all relationships and so all of these are based on tika, what is right, pono, uh, what is you know being honest and having integrity and all of this done with aroha or love. There is no judgment for where people are at, which means people, meeting people where they are when they arrive. So uh, this Tuvalu father of three explains what Tima Tangaho was for their whanau. The marae supported us to get a home and here we have a new home. The kids are happy, they have their own rooms now in our home. Te Puya still supports us with food and to get my wife and my daughter driving lessons. So they still support my family, our family now. So Te Matanga Ho is about starting to sort through some of those complex factors which contributed to many whānau becoming homeless in the first place. Um, just like this whānau was encouraged um, even after leaving, while whānau are still at the marae, they are encouraged to utilise the wraparound services on the marae, including the on-site WINS case manager, which is otherwise known as co-location. Um, there's also access to driver's licence support, ongoing kai and other support services as well. Traditional social service environments can unintentionally distinguish between staff and service user um, and this creates uh, an us and them relationship. A marae on the other hand is seen as a community where everyone has a place to belong so someone who may be seen as a client in one context is seen as simply a part of the marae whanau in this context. This was uh, this way of doing relationship creates community and long term connection that works equally for Māori and non Māori whānau. So uh, this Māori mother uh, of three explains what whānau order, order was for them. 
She says, I think Te Puya were the ones that made me happy because when I moved here, I left him my ex-partner. I didn't want any more of that rubbish. Telling Fitiao my story about what was happening, she listened to me. Man, I love you for that. Te Puya has always been there for me since I left. They had a routine. So at 8.30 p.m., the kids had to be in bed at 8.30 p.m. That's what the rules were there. My kids have learned a lot of things there. They've learned to be nice to each other, help out with things. So um, for this whānau, um, for this mum, whānau ora for her was uh, being heard for the first time. It was um, having her stories validated and affirmed and being supported to make good decisions for herself and her family. Um, she was also, she, she talks about her experience of being shown other ways of being and doing, which was described by other families as well. And these uh, different ways of doing these different skills that they learned, they took with them into their new lives. And so feeling happy and being able to think of a positive future for their whole whānau well-being is something that many whānau um, describe as, an, as a positive outcome of being part of this program. So this Māori mother of six describes her experience of mana motuhake. And she says, we just love helping people now that we've got into this place of where we are. I run a mum and bubs group, helping them come to come out of the place where I once was. It's a lot of work. I don't know how Fire Fitiao does it. I just speak wisdom into their life and guide them into the steps that I've made for myself. And you kind of see if they're willing to or not. Still connecting with them though, seeing how they are, sending them a kai parcel or something, because I already know how that feels from Te Puya Marai. It's just so amazing. So. For this mum, uh, being on a marae helped her remember uh, and reposition herself in her culture. She's having manaki from the marae helped this whole whānau transition into their new community, into their new home, and now the, both parents are leaders, have become leaders themselves, working alongside whānau who they can relate to through their own lived experiences. Um, they took full advantage of the opportunities that were provided for them on the program um, and that had, that safe environment really allows whānau to thrive and to make intentional decisions for themselves. Uh, the reconnecting to culture is emancipatory and uh, was a real strong point for this whānau in particular. Although the research is ongoing, the Manaki Tangata Irua program is a successful transformative program. The majority of the whānau who have engaged have achieved mana motihaki. The co-location is currently being rolled out across Tamaki Makoto, and the services operating at the marae appear to be successful in supporting whānau to express and enact Mana motihake and ranga tira tanga. Kia ora koutou katoa. Kia ora. It became a home for people forced to live in their cars or on the street. One of the volunteers who has been working really hard is Moana Kingi, Kingi, who spent day in, day out in the kitchen at the marae. Kia ora Moana, can you hear me right? Yes, kia ora boyfriend. <laughs> This is something that other marais uh, and other rohes might want to look at as well. Uh, ko tēnei te manaki a te puia, kia rātou, ina katae, ina kapirangi nau mai. 